Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and we're back again with another FM synthesis tutorial. In this episode, we're going to talk about ratios and how they work. So right here, we have just the sine wave going on, nothing special. And let's look at some of the controls here within FM8. We have this section right here that's called ratio, and then we have this offset section, and these have to do with the pitch of the operator. Now, when I'm talking about ratios, I'm not just talking about this button here, but I am talking about the difference between what's going on in, in this one and what's going on in like another one, if we turn that one on. And by the way, to turn these on, you right click on them, at least on Windows and Mac. Uh, maybe it's control click, I'm not sure. But in any case, you right click on these to turn them on. <clears throat> and you'll need to turn them on before they do anything. So. This one right here is at a one ratio here, and then this one also is at a one ratio. So they have between them a one to one ratio. And that ratio has a certain sound to it, one to one. Okay, so let's listen to what this does to the sound. If I go to two, it goes up an octave. This is like a half an octave, and then four is the third octave and you keep going up through the harmonic series so as you get higher the difference between each of these is less it follows like an exponential curve so basically the difference between 30 and 31 is very small but the difference between 1 and 2 is 100% difference so when we change the frequency of the modulator going into the carrier, well, let's go here, we get a whole different timbre. And this is how we get different timbres in FM synthesis, or at least one of the ways, one of the main ways. So as we increase the frequency through this ratio, we get still harmonic values. It still is not just noise, and it's not just um, uh, inharmonic sounds. It's still harmonic, but we get a different timbre. And it tends to be more metallic as you increase the ratio of the modulator versus the ratio of the carrier, things get more and more metallic. And uh, you can get a nice, let's see, like 10 to 1 is pretty good. And let's drop this into kind of a, a bell-like slope again. And it sounds like kind of a metallic bell sound. And if I um, go back here and turn this down, it goes from being more and more metallic into sounding maybe a little bit more glass-like, I would say. And then kind of into more woody soundingness. So it's almost as if we're increasing the density of the material that we're hitting, if you want to call it that. So using that power of ratio, we can get different timbers that sound more glassy or more kind of woody or some something in between. And depending on, of course, our envelope again, we can get sounds that are more, um, sound like an impact or more gradual or bowed or organ sounding and so forth. So using these two techniques, we can get a very broad range of timbers and sounds. <clears throat> but not only can the modulator have a higher frequency than the carrier, but we can go the other direction too. Let's increase this to two and have this one at one and see what that sounds like. So let's continue to increase the um, carrier frequency. So we get kind of this thinner sound here kind of a rubbery sound, I would say. Sounds maybe more string-like down here. <laughs> and I think if you want a nice little bass sound, we can get around in here, maybe one 
third. Probably give it a, a little weaker attack. And uh, let's, let's turn the, this, if I can grab that one thing. So again, you can get a whole nother range of timbers by increasing the ratio so that it's like one to three or one to five or one to 800, no, not 800, <laughs> one to 10 or something like that. And so just to give you an overview, as we go up in frequency here, it's kind of like we're doing a band pass and we're shifting the frequencies to go so that the, the lower end is cut off more. And, and we can do a trick here where we just turn on another operator and turn it up and reclaim some of our low end if we want something more rich. So now you're getting maybe a little idea of, of what we can do with this. Because we have all these oscillators and operators actually. And uh, we don't ever have to actually modulate these. We can just use them as oscillators. So that's how ratio works. You get a, a whole range of timbers depending on the ratio between um, the modulator and the um, carrier. And again, it's just like we, we divide this number by this number uh, and we get the same timbre, the same sound, except for maybe it's gonna be an octave higher or an octave lower. So if I'm here and uh, like, let's say I wanna do one to two, I can actually go 0.5 here and here I can go to one, and it's gonna be the same sound as if I am at one here. And two here is just gonna be an octave higher. Same sound. So don't be fooled by that. Um, ratio is ratio, and we can we only get the range of timbers that is, um, you know, basically whole number ratios between the modulator and the the carrier. But let's say we want to get some um, non-harmonic sounds. We want to get some kind of inharmonic sounds. We can just change the ratio here. And we get kind of a noisy, gongy thing. If I, um, let's put this one back to like three and this one to one. And then I'm gonna change this, turn this one up a bit, like there. I get kind of a more inharmonic. Let's give it a. bell type sound out of that. So using values that don't give you whole number ratios between these two guys will give you an inharmonic um, outcome. Um, now if we just want some movement, let's turn this back to whole number ratio here. And we want it, since, you know, it's so static and so unlively. If we change the offset here, we'll start to get some movement. Kind of a vibrato. You can get a similar effect. Let's turn this up a little more. And uh, bring us down one, just to make it, there we go. Now when you uh, change this one, you get movement and you get the same amount of movement in the high frequencies as you do in the low frequencies. But if I were to change this a little bit to get a little movement, the frequency of that movement is different in the lower register than it is in the higher register. It's uh, gonna be a lot faster in the higher registers than it is in the lower registers. 
but you can of course add movement by changing the ratio a little bit too but you're going to start to push into inharmonic values if you do this too much so that's pretty much it guys you have ratios that you can use to get different timbers you have the ability to add movement by changing the offset and you can get into inharmonic uh, timbers by making non whole number uh, ratios between your modulator and your carrier thanks for watching this i hope this has been helpful next time we're going to get into the actual difference between frequency modulation and phase modulation which I have uh, stated before that FM8 uses phase modulation and most FM synthesizers are actually phase modulation synthesizers. But the difference actually turns out to be relevant and to understand and be able to predict what kind of results you're gonna get with quote unquote FM, you, it, it behooves you to understand why it's not really frequency modulation. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe. Come back and we'll have that one to you, hopefully before too long. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.